Now I think we can all agree that anime is amazing, with plenty of genres to satisfy everyone's needs. However, there is one genre that anime can't seem to get right, and that's horror. Even though for the most part horror manga is really good, a lot of horror anime just can't seem to make it scary at all. I have watched countless horror animes and I have never been scared by any of them, as I find that anime doesn't properly utilize its music and sound effects to enhance the horror experience. This was until recently, when I decided to watch Shiki, and let me tell you that this is one of the best horror animes you will ever watch. It offers so much more than just horror, as it has the incredible ability to make you question the morality and humanity of everyone involved. Shiki at its core tells the story of people dealing with an infestation of vampires, or as they're called in this anime, Shiki, who are taking over the village and killing villagers. The story is told from the perspective of multiple different people, and because of this, there isn't really any one protagonist that you stay with. There is no character who is always at the center of attention. Some characters may experience something that another character never will, as some episodes take place at the same time but are for different characters, and you may not even see integral characters for long periods of time. The story of Shiki is focusing more on the village as a whole and not one individual person, although some characters are more important than others. By putting the main focus on the village as a whole and not any particular character, it creates a genuinely disjointed and isolating feeling, as even though you may understand them and their goals, you are never really able to become connected with them in any meaningful way. Some characters also have radical shifts in their personality where they completely change from the character you knew at the start of the anime. The anime itself opens with a shot of people looking for Megami, who is one of the main reoccurring characters in Shiki. We are then sent back in time to help understand what exactly happened, and it's clear immediately that Megami is a main character, with her outfit choice and pink hair that helps her to stand out way more than any other character. This design choice of hers doesn't go unnoticed by the other characters, with her constantly getting mocked for her outfits by the village elders. She's a character that despises the town she lives in and has aspirations of leaving the village and going into the city. She is also one of the originators of the Yandere archetype in anime before Mirai Nikki would popularize it. It's through her perspective that we're introduced to our next main character, Natsuno Yuki. Wait a minute. Yuki! Natsuno is another character who hates the village he lives in, almost as much as he hates Megami, with him being sick of her stalking him at his window every night. He is one of the first people to learn the truth about what is happening in the village. We later see what happened to Megami as we see her visit the mansion where the Kirishiki family recently moved into, before finally being found in a ditch by a villager, bringing us back into the present. It's during her examination that we are introduced to another main character, Toshio, who is the local doctor of the village. Toshio is the character who changes the most over the course of the anime, with the events that happen heavily affecting his mental state. Lastly, there's Toshio's friend Seishin, who is the last main character of Shiki. He is a character who suffers from a lot of inner conflict and struggles. It's also very clear early on that he does not enjoy his life, with him suffering from depression and feeling forsaken by God. With the novel he's writing also ironically called Shiki, being intertwined with the story and some of the themes of the anime. Shiki also has a great collection of side characters that help to make the village feel more alive, but as the anime goes on, that becomes less so. Some of these side characters are Toru, who is the only friend Natsuno has in the entire village and has a crush on Ritsuko, one of the nurses in the village. Then there's Masao, who is voiced by my favourite voice actor, Todd Habakorn. He puts on an incredible performance and really makes you hate this character as much as possible, which is how annoying and insensitive he is. Then there's Tatsumi and the Kirishiki family, who are made up of Father Seishiro, Mother Chizuru, and daughter Sunako, who serve as a point of mystery for the anime and are incredibly creepy to look at. Now I'm saying this in confidence when I tell you that the first nine episodes of Shiki is some of the best horror I have ever experienced. For these nine episodes, the threat of the village is completely unseen, as it is presumed that it is a plague sweeping through the village that is responsible for killing villagers, including one of the main characters, Megami. During these episodes, there is a clear and intentional use of sound effects to enhance the horror experience, or lack thereof, with some scenes containing nothing but pure silence that helps to create an unsettling and hostile atmosphere. Shiki builds up this uneasy and paranoid feeling around the fear of the unknown, with there being no real idea about what is going on in the village and what's responsible for killing all the villagers, with Natsuno being terrified of what's behind his window even though Megami is dead and is no longer stalking him, or is she? He is too scared to open the window and face the unknown, leaving us without an idea of whether his fear is real or all inside his head. For some reason, Natsuno and some of the other villagers have the power of Joel from The Last of Us, with being able to see a perfect outline of people through walls. This 
This effect is used incredibly well to build up an impending doom and eventual reveal. As Natsuno hears the person that was behind his window coming into his house and headed to his room. This scene is executed perfectly as it builds the horror and suspense to its maximum with brilliantly placed music and sound effects to further emphasize the sense of dread closing in. It works up to this reveal and when you're sure you're going to see it, nothing happens, which is honestly scarier and just further adds to the paranoia about whether everything you're seeing is real. But in the moment, you can't help not to feel a sense of relief that everything's okay. And then in that moment, when you're the most vulnerable, it strikes. It catches you at the moment you feel the safest and confirms any suspicion about what was really going on, that the Shiki are real and have infested the village. Characters like Toshio also come to this conclusion after having no other possible reason to explain all the deaths in the village. The question then becomes how to kill them, which is difficult to establish. As this anime is attempting to be based in the real world, the idea of vampires or shiki has become so muddied by films and media, not giving a clear indication of what is actually effective against shiki. I should also mention that these shiki are extremely smart and will find any and every way possible to get to you. Whether it be using mind control powers to control their victims, posing as officials to get you to invite them into your house, or them just casually being invited in by villagers while on a nighttime walk, with them usually declining but leaving it off on a chilling line with, We'll take you up on your kind invitation some other time which takes on a whole new meaning when we know the truth about the Kirishiki family being Shiki. I mean, it's in the name. This is how they get to you, by earning your trust or tricking you into letting them into your house. Unless you're an idiot like Megami who just visits the Kirishiki's house of her own volition. On top of how smart they are, design-wise, they have easily some of the most haunting designs in anime. This is where the art design shines through. It can be a little hard to get used to, but the art design does a great job at magnifying the horror and showing just how terrifying the Shiki can be. Be. With their skin degrading and emptiness in their eyes that represents a lack of a soul, they truly stand out. Especially when their eyes start glowing red rings, which indicates their bloodlust. And when you come face to face with that, it's horrifying. From this point onwards, the anime also takes a dramatic shift in tone. It still incorporates elements of horror and can still be incredibly scary even after the Shiki have been revealed, but the anime becomes a more humanizing story, making people question whether the Shiki are evil or if that's just how we portray them to be. Where in most media, the hero of the story are the humans and the villains are always the Shiki, this anime is much more unclear, as we get to see life from the view of the Shiki. These so-called monstrous creatures that have been murdering countless villagers, the unseen evil taking innocent lives. After having been afraid of them for so long, being so casually shown them and how they interact introduces an element of normalcy where you no longer come to truly fear them. While it still utilizes elements of horror in it, it is no longer to the same effect, but still enough to keep you engaged and invested in the story. Shiki does an incredible job at human humanizing the Shiki and making you empathetic for them rather than just hating and fearing them, portraying them in a different light to the way they were displayed earlier on in the anime, with these Shiki having emotions and feelings being the exact same as when they were alive, with the only difference about them being that they need blood to survive. This realization also dawns on Natsuno and brings about my favorite line in this anime. Why can't you act more like a vampire and less like the guy that I used to know? With moments like these, you begin to feel more sympathetic for these Shiki, as without dreams drinking blood, they will die. But some of these characters feeling guilty for the choices they've made to survive as Shiki, with one of the biggest examples being now Yasumori, who goes absolutely sicko mode and murders her entire family in order to survive, but also in the hope that they would become Shiki. The sad thing is, none of her family members rose up and she was left even more alone with the blood of the people she loved on her hands. She unwittingly took away her own happiness all for the sake of survival. And in her final moments, she realizes that she will never be able to be with her family in heaven because of her choices, perfectly summing up how even though they are Shiki on the outside and need blood to survive, on the inside they're just as human as you or me. Shiki plays this narrative both ways by revealing just how cruel and evil humans can be, showing that both humans and Shiki are more similar than you think. As with the death of his wife and all the other villagers weighing so heavily on his conscience, Toshio is desperate to find out any way to kill the Shiki. He does this by waiting to see if the dead body of his wife will turn into a vampire. Unfortunately for his wife, she does turn into a vampire, and Toshio begins experimenting on her with all types of poisons and incisions, using her as a test dummy to figure out what can kill Shiki. This scene goes on for way too long and is incredibly disturbing, especially as you have to watch as his wife screams in pain, begging for help, while Toshio is slicing her up with absolutely zero remorse. Most of the gore in this scene is also completely uncensored, making for a really unnerving and unsettling experience as you get to see all the cuts
cuts and slices in excruciating detail, with you watching as a man slowly crosses over the edge to insanity. And by the end of it, his wife gets absolutely brutalized by Toshio, showing how little remorse and humanity he has left. This scene is perfection. With the sound effects and music enhancing everything that's happening, it does an excellent job at portraying the Shiki we once called evil as victims. This theme would continue to occur throughout the late stages of the anime, with them not only being victims of the villagers, but also of their own curse that was forcefully placed upon them. The biggest example that shows off the dark side of humanity is in episode 20.5, where some of the villagers explore the sewers in order to kill some of the remaining Shiki. It's in this episode where the humans are now the hunters instead of the prey. The Shiki themselves this episode are completely terrified of the villagers as they are captured one by one, with the raw emotions coming from these characters being utterly heart-wrenching. The Shiki are placed outside and are burned to a crisp by the sun, being killed in the most inhumane way imaginable, with the villagers utterly apathetic to their suffering. It is astonishing how this anime so easily transitions the horror from the perspective of the humans to the Shiki so seamlessly. I also find it incredibly unsettling how the villagers so casually sing songs together while piling bodies up, and how they are not at all phased by all the blood covering their faces and clothes. It's as if they have been dehumanized by all the violence that has become completely normal and justified to them. The villagers also end up turning on themselves, as the paranoia around the Shiki has made the villagers fear and hate them so much that anyone who gets bitten, or even if they think that anyone's been bitten, they kill them. Even though they know it takes more than just a bite to turn into a Shiki, they refuse to listen to reason and kill, even though there was no real justification for it. To the point where they have to rationalize their decisions to make themselves feel no guilt at all for what they've done. It's in moments like these where you have to really ask yourself who's worse, because at this point, there is no wrong answer. There are very few innocent characters in this anime, and one of them is Ritsuko, as even though she turns into a Shiki, she refuses to drink blood, even though she needs it to survive, preserving her innocence and putting into question the morality of choosing to live as a Shiki, confronting the saddening truth that maybe Shiki were never meant to exist, as she ends up dying alongside Toru, the person who loved her, which was a bittersweet moment to say the least. Shiki did an incredible job building up the narrative of Seijin's book as well, recalling a similar story to that of Kane and Abel, where Kane murders his brother out of jealousy, where the younger brother was loved by all, and the older brother curses everything he touches. Only in this iteration of the story, the older brother is plagued by his dead brother's ghost, a Shiki. However, by the end of the anime, it is revealed that the brothers are actually the same person, with the dead brother thankful for being freed from a life he was forced to live and no longer enjoyed. This plays as a perfect representation of how Seishin feels about his life, with him feeling trapped in his role and unable to escape. In this scene, Seishin is effectively killing a part of himself, the part that felt obligated to do his duty, which is caused by him seeing his father as a Shiki. This grants him freedom, and he chooses to help the Shiki Sunako, as they both feel forsaken by God. This type of character evolution is so refreshing and different to see, and is reflected in a lot of the other characters, but nowhere near as original, with characters like Kaori, going from being a carefree, energetic character, to having a complete mental breakdown, where she has accepted her death so much to the point where she starts digging her own grave. The irony of this is, spoiler alert, she doesn't even die. I thoroughly enjoyed my time watching this anime. Not only is the horror fantastic, but the overall message is built and developed extremely well. There are so many small moments that make me really appreciate this anime, with the intro scene to the first and final episodes being exactly the same, but both are with different intents, or how this anime constantly surprised me with the way characters were killed off. This is an anime where no character is safe. I thought for sure they would have a generic trope in anime where the main girl reunites with the main character after not seeing him for a long time and that something interesting would happen between them, but no, nothing of the sort occurs and Shiki sticks to delivering a more grounded in reality experience where there are no heroes. There are no characters who get out unscathed from this encounter. They're either dead, badly injured, or so messed up mentally that they can barely function. This is a story that has no winners. People died on both sides, shattered families and haunting memories are all that remain. The final shot of this anime, if nothing else, tells us that the cycle will continue, that the struggle between man and monster to understand one another is eternal, and even though towards the end of the anime it can get a bit confusing with what's happening, I definitely recommend you guys check it out. Thank you guys for watching the video, the channel has over 200 subscribers, and I want to thank everyone for all the support on these videos, it means the world, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one.